Well, welcome back. Got a 1998 Ford Ranger 3.0 liter. I uh, just fixed the uh, idle air control valve connector on this. It was broken. It's just had a new engine, no, new engine, a uh, <coughs> junkyard engine put in it basically. Um, and it was stalling at idle. Fixed that issue, but got a misfire and it's got a couple of codes. It's got a P0174, P0171 lean, both banks. So, uh, stumbles pretty badly. It uh, doesn't seem to matter whether it's uh, cold or not cold uh, and it's not getting enough fuel. Uh, we're going to go through looking at that data and uh, test this out. I believe it needs a fuel pump and uh, we'll put a fuel pump in it if uh, that's what uh, determines wrong with it. Here you can see the codes that we have and these are the two down the bottom here that I'm, I'm going to start with. I believe these two are most likely <clears throat> caused by the system being lean. So we've got uh, lean on both banks and we're going to go take a look at some freeze frame data and see when this occurred. So we're looking at freeze frame data here for this Ford Ranger and we're looking at the uh, system uh, lean bank to the P0174 and what I really wanted to see when this is uh, what the temperature uh, of the, the vehicle was, what the coolant temperature is and what the uh, <clears throat> idle speed is uh, when this code <clears throat> was saved. Uh, if you look here the engine speed 1900 22 so it's not at idle and engine coolant temperature is 179 it's up to temperature and what that tells me is this most likely is not caused by a vacuum leak uh, vacuum leak um, <clears throat> in general uh, especially on an intake would generally see that uh, when the engine's cold uh, and as the engine warms up that would usually get better but you can see our short term short term Fuel trim is really it's really high, 18, 19. It's pretty pretty high, and if you look at our long term, it's pretty much maxed out on both banks. Um, so I don't believe this is a vacuum leak, and we're going to go a little further and do some more diagnosis here and see what we can find. All right, so I've got a fuel pressure gauge hooked up here. Uh, there's a Schrader valve port right on the front of this rail, passenger side at the front. Uh, I've got a rag just to see. I'm going to be inside turning the key. I want to make sure this is not leaking at all. Uh, we're going to watch this gauge. This pump should run at 55 to 65 pounds. Uh, and I've already looked at this a little bit and it should hold pressure. So I, I should be able to turn this key multiple times and it's going to build pressure up. And then when I turn the key off or the relay kicks off, it's not going to drop to zero. And you'll watch, it's just going to drop to zero. You get, get a chance to see that. So. Should, it should come up, and when I start the engine, it should be up in here, and I think we're going to see it's, the fuel pressure on it's pretty low. Let me get my light set up there for you. Zoom in. Hopefully try to zoom in here for you. All right. Hopefully you can see that. I can't tell if you can really see that or not, but I think you can. Maybe not, maybe a little fuzzy, but... It should go almost 180 degrees from where it is. Okay, I'm going to prime it. Turn the key on. Let it prime. Turn the key on again. Turn it on again. Now the key off, it should maintain pressure. And I think. It's not maintaining pressure at all. Drop right back to zero. So check valves, two, one of two things, really that can cause that. Check valve, which is in the in the tank with the pump, and this this is a returnless fuel system. It doesn't have a return line. It's just one line. So the check valve is actually in the uh, <clears throat> and the regulator are actually in the tank with the pump. Or you could have an injector that's dumping fuel. If you got an injector stump stuck open, it could be dumping fuel out of the injector. I, I don't think we. Have it here, I would expect two things. Uh, I would not expect lean on both banks and staying lean and constantly lean because uh, you're dumping fuel through one, of the, one or more of the injectors. I also would expect that uh, you'd be dumping fuel into the crankcase if it's just, you know, if you've got an injector that's wide open. Uh, and I'm not seeing that, I'm not smelling that. So I believe we have at a minimum a check valve problem, but I think we're going to see this pressure is going to be low when it's run. So I'm going to start this up. We're going to run it. It should be up in this, like I said before, it should be up in this area and I have a feeling we're going to be around uh, here. 
25, 30 pounds, maybe 35. So I switched the uh, fuel filter on this, which is on the inside of the rail on the driver's side, and uh, really didn't make a difference. Actually, the pressure went down a little more. It's about 25 psi. Turned the key, uh, key on engine off three times in succession. Try to bump it up and see how much pressure it would build. Never got about above 25 psi. I could get the engine to run, but it's running really rough because it's so lean. So <clears throat> I know I don't have a, a restriction in the uh, fuel filter. This is a returnless system, so the uh, pressure valve is in the tank with the pump. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect uh, right in front of the fuel filter and I'm going to hook my pressure gauge right at that spot and that'll tell me whether or not, my, my concern here is I could have some injectors that are leaking down and causing a problem. Uh, I'm going to basically take them out basically by just hooking right in by the fuel filter uh, with the pressure gauge and I'll do the same thing and we're going to see what pressure we get there. Alright, so I've got this uh now remember, this is a returnless system. You don't do this this way on a system that has a return line when the pressure regulator is up front. The pressure regulator for this vehicle is <clears throat> with the fuel pump in the tank. So it's got the relief, uh, the pressure uh, regulator there. So what I've done is I've just disconnected the fuel filter and tied my pressure gauge right into that. So I basically deadheaded it right at the, uh, the pressure gauge here at the filter. So what I'm doing is I'm bypassing any... Um, other thing that might be leaking. So if I'm losing pressure, I'm not developing enough pressure. My, if I have an injector that's leaking or multiple injectors that are leaking, I've just taken them all out of the equation here. So what I'll do is, it's upside down a little bit through there, but I'll zoom in so you can watch it. And I'm going to cycle the key. See if I can get it to focus here. Hopefully. I hope. Come on. There it goes. So, get a little... Alright. So watch that. I'm going to cycle the key and build some pressure up here. See, now this pump's working well. I should get 55, 65 psi, uh, and you'll see what happens here. Try to keep the light on there for you as I cycle the key. It's one, two, three. All right. So you can see what's happening. See, it's bleeding back down right away, and we never really got much pressure there, maybe 20 pounds. I don't know, I can't see it and do this at the same time. One. So, yeah, it didn't get much. So we're not, we're not really generating much pressure uh, from the pump at all. Does that mean the pump's bad? Not necessarily. There's one more test. We need to do an amperage test, a current draw test on this pump. Uh, to see what kind of amperage it's drawn to see if we have a wiring problem. You could do a voltage drop test on, on the power and ground on this, uh, but in order to do that at the pump, you got to pick the bed off the truck or you got to drop the tank, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go, I think, find the inertia switch, which is uh, on the load side of the circuit uh, from, the, from the relay, or maybe a fuse. There's a fuse for this as well, and I'm going to put an amp clamp on there. I'll show you that, and we're going to see what this uh, uh, fuel pump looks like. So I'm over on the passenger side, I removed this front kick panel on the passenger side and 
up in here, get the light in there so you can see, is the inertia switch. And there's a uh, pink with a black trace, green with a yellow trace. Either one of those wires, you can go off of that to get a reading for amperage for the fuel pump. That feeds the fuel pump, so um, that's what I've done. I've got a <coughs> low current clamp set on 20 amp scale hooked up. And of course, the first time I hooked it up, it was backwards, so it was inverted. So just flipped it around. And, and then we're going to start this up. And we're going to take a look and see what it looks like the actual commutators look like in the pump and see what kind of amperage is drawn. All right, so I've got this set up with my clamp, my amp clamp. I'm going to start it up. Let's see what we get. There we go. Drawing about three and a half, four amps. Kind of what I expect, a 30, 35 PSI. It's low. I don't see any real high amperage draw, so I don't expect that there's a wiring issue here. Okay, so I've got this blocked out with uh, time measurement, eight. Um, commutators on the pump. I believe that's what this pump is. Um, let me find my... Uh, where's my measurement? There it is. 8.78 milliseconds. So we're going to determine and figure out how fast that pump is spinning. But the big thing here is I'm not drawing an inordinate amount of amperage. I don't expect that I have a wiring issue. So at this point, you can call the pump on this. The pump is weak. It is running, but it's not putting out much pressure at all. Uh, it's not a leaky injector. We bypassed that. We kind of eliminated that. Um, and I'm going to get you the speed of this. So it's going to take 60,000. <clears> that's six, uh, 1,000 milliseconds in a second times 60. That's for a minute. Divided by uh, the difference here, which is 8.78, 8780 equals... Six sixty-eight hundred. Basically, uh, if I did it, I'm gonna do it a different way. So sixty, one, two, three, divided by uh, eight point seven eight. Six thousand eight hundred RPM. So it's spinning pretty good. Uh, I don't know what the normal RPM rate for this pump is, and my guess is it's a little higher. But we're not putting out uh, much pressure with this pump at all. So. I'm going to call the pump at this point and you're going to have to pull the bed off of this uh, Ranger and uh, replace the pump in it.